YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Every single week, I drop a new video about film photography. So if that's your thing, definitely go ahead and subscribe. This week, we're gonna be talking about my favorite Canon SLR camera, and that is the Canon EOS 300V. In my opinion, this camera is by far the best value package that you can get from any of the Canon SLR offerings. This camera was manufactured by Canon in the late 90s and into the very early 2000s. It definitely is characterized by that quintessential late 90s, early 2000s look. I mean, just look at it. There's a whole bunch of plastic in there. There's some weird curvy lines. There's that silver, but kind of fake silver look. It's just quintessential 90s. You know the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, that definitely applies to this camera. Don't judge it by what it looks like on the outside. The inside is most definitely what counts. So the first thing I wanna talk about with this camera is the exterior. As I mentioned already, it's not very pretty. It's plastic, it's this weird silver gray color, just not a very attractive camera. Additionally, the size is actually pretty good. It's a very, very compact camera and it's probably one of the smallest film SLRs you're gonna find from the Canon range, from that late 90s to early 2000s model. In its small size, it's got a fantastic grip that you can really sink your hand into. It's really impressive given how small the camera is. It's also very, very lightweight, which is fantastic for lugging it around. And overall, it doesn't really attract too much attention, which is fantastic. I don't like people looking at me and asking questions when I'm out there typically, especially if I'm in a foreign land being a tourist. So this camera looks pretty cheap and no one really gets impressed by it, which lets you lie low when you walk around and take photos. Last thing to mention about the looks is that it actually has a flash built in. Built-in flashes are definitely something that's not very trendy, especially when you are a digital shooter like I was, but this built-in flash definitely is very helpful and it gives you that classic film direct flash look that's very popular nowadays with a lot of film shooters. Overall, this camera is very plasticky and kind of cheap looking, but it's pretty sturdy nonetheless. Even though it doesn't look like it can hold its own, it definitely can given how sturdy it's built. The next thing I wanna talk about is probably the biggest selling point of this camera, and that is the autofocus system. This camera does feature an autofocus system with seven points, and those seven points work very, very well. The beauty of this camera is you can point it at any subject and very quickly get it in autofocus and take your photo right after. It's just fantastic for a run and gun kind of scenario or for street photography as well. Not only does it have seven autofocus points, but you can also use single focus point mode as well. That single focus point, you can actually move around between the seven options and put it wherever you see fit on your frame. That's fantastic, especially if you're trying to avoid that you know, frame and recompose action that a lot of us do when taking photos. Here, you can kind of compose your shot and then just move the autofocus point to wherever you need it to be. And it's really interesting, when you compare this camera's autofocus to a lot of the other autofocus systems for some of Canon's professional automatic SLRs, it still holds its own. I don't believe there's a lot of cameras out there from that Canon system range that have this many autofocus points or perhaps even have more. If they do, then it's gotta be the high-end, super professional level film cameras from the late 2000s. Best of all with this autofocus system is that it works perfectly across the entire range of EF lenses. Any lens that you have made by Canon from the EF range that has autofocus will work perfectly on this. Simply put, this camera lets you take advantage of all of the Canon glass that is out there and it gives you the full autofocus option as well. You can't put a price tag on that. That is very invaluable. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about with regards to this camera is the operation. This camera is very, very easy to use. As I mentioned, you literally just point it at your subject, press the shutter button, and boom, you take a photo. There are a lot of other things you can do with it, which I definitely wanna highlight. First thing to highlight is that this camera does have several automatic shooting modes. You've got aperture priority, shutter priority, and then of course you've got your regular manual. I never use manual because it's not very easy to kind of move around the menus here, but using aperture priority or shutter priority, that pretty much gets the job done very nicely. It's very convenient to have as well. This camera also does let you do exposure compensation and bracketing. It's very useful to have in an automatic camera because then you can control things like highlights and shadows depending on how your subject is lit. However, it is a bit annoying to use because neither one has a dedicated dial. You have to use the buttons and then navigate into the very simple menu that's on the camera. And that's kind of annoying, you know, especially because the buttons aren't the most tactile when you press them. It's not hard to do, but it is annoying. And sometimes it doesn't operate like you want it to. One of the really clever things about this camera is the auto wind. Of course, auto winding isn't that impressive. You know, most automatic cameras have that. So you just simply put your film in the camera, 
close the cover and instantly it starts to do its thing and it does read the ISO as well. The cool thing about this camera is that it actually winds all of the film out of the canister first and then as you take your photos it winds it back in one by one. No matter what happens all of the shots that you've taken will be saved because the camera has wound them already back into the film canister. That's pretty cool and I really like that this camera is looking out for the everyday shooter and helping you kind of succeed in your film photography journey. One thing I will say though is I actually like to shoot half rolls, cut them out and develop them and then save the rest. You can't do that with this camera because of the fact that all the film has already been pulled out of the canister and then rewound back into it. It's annoying, but again, if I wanna do that, then I'll use a different camera. But I still really like that this camera protects your images. Lastly, this camera does support a burst mode and a timer. Timer, of course, is very useful, especially if you're doing tripod exposures. Sometimes you wanna just make sure things are perfectly steady, so you can use the timer to help you do that. One quick thing to mention is that this camera does require batteries. It uses the normal CR2 batteries that you can find online pretty easily, but if you don't have any, you will not be able to use the camera, unfortunately. I know it's a bummer, so that means if you're traveling, definitely bring an extra battery. They do last pretty much forever though, so don't be too worried about it. Overall, I've got very positive things to say about this camera. It just is so easy to use, it's so compact, and it's so convenient. When you travel around, this is a perfect camera to carry on you. On top of that, it's not the most interesting looking camera, so it doesn't really catch the eye of thieves or just anybody in general who's curious, you know? It's a very good camera to walk around and be independent with. I absolutely love the autofocus on this camera. It really helps us do things a lot faster. I know some of you out there love doing manual focus because you find that to be a bit more enjoyable and tactile. That's totally okay. I'm no purist, I enjoy that, but I also do like some automatic function. So this camera gives me exactly what I need from an autofocus perspective. Additionally, I was a digital shooter on Canon and I had a bunch of lenses that I did not want to get rid of because of how good they performed. This camera lets me just use them with no issue at all and I get to get the most value out of them continuing now that I'm moving from digital into more film photography. Last thing to mention about this camera is the price. I picked mine up for about 30 pounds here in the UK, but this camera on eBay ranges from 25 to maybe 40 bucks. It's so cheap. So if you carry this camera around and perhaps you break it or you wanna be a bit more adventurous with it and take it into some less than safe situations, do it. Because if you break this camera, you can just buy another one. It's fantastic having the freedom to do whatever you want with this camera and not have to worry too much about it. It's basically the exact opposite of having one of those luxurious, more timepiece kind of SLR cameras. If you're trying to look cool while taking film photography shots, this camera is not really gonna achieve that for you. But if you want something that's very practical and usable and it's gonna help you be the best you can be, this camera will definitely do that. What's your experience with Canon SLR cameras? I know there's a ton of them out there and I know people kind of dive into different ones. I personally think this is my favorite. What's yours? Let me know in the comments. All right, YouTube, I hope this was helpful. I really love this camera and I hope that this encourages you to get one if you're interested. Please go ahead and leave me a like on this video if you enjoyed the video or if you learned something. And definitely do not forget to subscribe since I'm reviewing a lot of cameras, putting out more videos, and now I'm doing printing as well. And I'll showcase all of that on my channel. Thanks for the support, YouTube. Peace.